Hello everyone. About four months ago, we installed a DIY leveling kit in our vintage bus using the factory airbags. We wanted to give you a heads up before we dive into the video and make you aware of a few things. First off, this video is a lot longer than our normal videos. We normally, when we have a large project, we like to break them up into smaller videos, but we thought having it in one video and making it as concise as possible would be a better resource for our bus community friends. The second thing is, we tried to detail not just the how, but also the why on some of the major decisions we made along the way. We also share with you how we troubleshoot some of the issues when we thought we were finished and we had to revamp the system a little bit. So if you're planning on doing something like this, be sure you watch all the way to the end because we do have to change some things. We also had some issues with the audio and that was because we had to switch cameras and didn't have our normal microphone and it was a very windy day. In this video, you'll see that we hooked this project up to our home automation system, and that's because we already have that up and running and configured, but this could easily be adapted with just a series of switches or even a touchpad. At the end of the project, I'm gonna come back and give you a cost breakdown as well as an overview of how the system has been performing and how we have been using it. With that said, let's jump in to the DIY leveling system. All right, we're back in Arizona. So we are home for graduations and we have family visiting. And so we've come home and we'll be here for a few weeks. So we thought, why not do a few upgrades on the bus? But one thing that we wanted to change is uh, putting a leveling kit on the bus. And that is when we park, if we're, you know, a little bit off center, we do use blocks to, to level it currently. But sometimes even with the blocks, it's still a little bit off. We're not super particular about it, but there's been a few situations now where we thought, oh man, having a little bit of leveling would be really nice right about now. So what we're gonna do is modify the air suspension in the bus to accommodate leveling valves. So the bus currently has a leveling system on it from the 60s, and what it does is it keeps the bus at a certain height, no matter what the weight is. And the reason that's important is because if we're riding with a tank full of water versus a tank that's empty, um, that's a huge difference because we carry about 163 gallons of water. So that can make a huge difference in the suspension. And so what the leveling system on the bus does is it keeps that the, the height at the exact right level. And the reason that that's important is because the drive line and the transmission, everything has to be aligned just right for it to work correctly as it's going down the road. The way that we can use it is when it's parked, it doesn't really matter that the drive line's perfectly aligned. And so what we can do is we can use the bags to dump one side or dump to the front to kind of get that sort of perfect level um, when we're parked. Now, when we take off, obviously, we want the leveling system to do its job. We want it to come back up to the right ride height. And so we've taken all those things into consideration when designing a very simple leveling system for the bus. So our bus is equipped with a full air ride system. And that is there are two bags at every corner on our bus. So there are eight bags um, in total. Now our particular bus in the rear there are leveling valves that level left to right, but in the front, it only controls the height. So both bags are controlled by a single leveling valve. So what we're gonna do is use these purge solenoids or these solenoids, and these are, um, so these are 12 volt solenoids um, rated for, I believe 145 PSI. And what they do is um, these are normally off. So unless there's power going to this, these will be off. Once you put 12 volts on this, then they will let air through. So here's how we're thinking they're going to work. So we're gonna need two of these, one T, and some fittings to hook the lines back up. Now, our bus has already been retrofitted with quarter inch, um, poly line. So this is much easier to work with than the copper stuff. So this is what we're going to use. It's already on the bus. We've already changed the bag. So we kind of already know the configuration down there. And so here is how the system's going to work. So we're going to have two valves um, and then a T. 
and then this T will go to the existing uh, bags. So the bags will come out here. The input from the um, from the factory leveling valve will be through here. So when the engine, so when I turn the ignition key on, that will power these on so that they're on anytime that the key is on. And that's important because of what's coming up next. Now, when we're parked and the key is off, these will turn off, therefore isolating the factory leveling valve from the bags completely. Now on the other side, we're gonna have another one of these. And so we'll be able to lower the bag by dumping the air out of this valve. Since this one is closed, this one can open and dump. And even though the leveling valve will tell it to fill back up, it's gonna ignore that because this one is going to be off. So that's basically how the system's gonna work. Now you may ask, what if we dump too far and we need to put some air back in there? Well, what we're going to do is this is going to take input from the key, but it can be overridden um, through a switch so that we can just do just this one. And so once we open this one, there should be high, high amount of air still in the system and it will fill the bag back up essentially. So that's how it's gonna work in a nutshell. Um, that's version one, which will be just sort of manually switched. Version two will be a little bit more complicated. So version two is obviously gonna involve some automation. Um, and so for this automation, we'll need something like this, which is a eight way relay board because there's eight valves to actuate. And this little guy right here. So this is called an MPU 6050. And these are an accelerometer as well as a gyroscope. So it will tell you when you're level or it'll tell you how far off of level you are. So the theory is we would have a routine that's called auto level, which we, you know, hit on our phones or on a button or something. And that would be smart enough to take the input from this and say it's high on the, on the front right it would dump that bag until it's empty. Now, there will have to be some finagling because these things are never perfect. And obviously, you know, we're dealing with a mechanical system that can bounce and things like that. But you get the idea. We can build in some buffers and some timers and things that will allow us to get it to level using the input from one of these. And these are very inexpensive. I think I bought three of them for like $10. So anyway, We'll see how this goes, but we are not going to do that as phase one. Phase one is getting this hardware in and getting it in a way where we can actually use it and so that the factory system still works the way the factory system worked from the factory. All right, so one thing to mention is the really important part about these um, push-to-fit adapters is that they say DOT on them. So um, I've heard several horror stories of people that did not use DOT approved uh, connectors and they come flying off. So the DOT ones are supposed to be approved by DOT for use in vehicles and stuff like that. So um, anyway, these are all DOT approved. They're stamped right on the very edge. It's very difficult to see, but it says quarter inch outer diameter uh, DOT. So uh, it's probably not possible to see, but um, it's one thing to keep in mind when you're buying these. You can buy these adapters for pretty inexpensive that are not DOT approved. I would not recommend that at all. <laughs> so um, these are a little bit more. I think they're like five or six dollars each as opposed to being like, you know, a few cents each or 50 cents each. Uh, it's well worth getting the little bit more expensive ones. Anyway, so... These also have um, the compound already in them, so we don't have to use Teflon tape or anything, but this one does not, so we will have to use that. Now, we have to be really careful. Um, these have an in and out marked on them, and we have to respect that, and so this will be input from the leveling valve, and it will go into here, so... Um, that and then this will have input from the high pressure side and it will dump air out. So we use this one as a purge valve. So here we go.
pieces. So I have to be mindful too of how this thing comes together. I kind of want this to be up. So I'm going to try to spin it. Hopefully I'm gentle enough with this. But, so that it's lined up like that. Is that pretty straight? Let me see. Put it down a little. Um, it could, it could come, come a little bit. Uh, like just a tick, tick more t toward you. Yeah, that's straighter. Well, actually, let's do this side first. It's this one. And we will test these before we put it on there and make sure it's not leaking and stuff like that. So go ahead and install this one now. So on the exhaust side, I still haven't figured out, we'll put some kind of muffler on it so that dirt and grime and stuff doesn't get all up in the housing. Um, but I haven't figured that part out yet. We'll have to get something at the hardware store for that. So again, in to out, should go the same way. I'll have to have something to clamp out this house on. All right, so we've made this up. We're ready to create a test harness. So what I did was I just put a uh, quick fitting onto a coupler and then used one of our airline connectors. And so this one I will then hook to this side and that should allow us to test it. All right, so we've got it all hooked up to our line and this is under pressure. There is no leaking, so that's a good sign. Um, so next, we'll try to actuate this valve, and when we do, we should have air coming out of this, this port right here, which would simulate filling the bag. Um, after that's finished, we will block this off with another valve, just to block it off, and then we will see if we can get this one to exhaust. So that's what we'll go to next, but I'll need a 12-volt source, so I'll probably get that from our bay down here just to test stuff out. Good to go. So we'll go black from black. Red, red, ready. Okay, so that seems to work. Our compressor's kicked on. All right, so we've made another tube. Um, it now just connects. This would simulate the bag on this side. Obviously, it's just uh, this this solenoid valve, but this will stop the air from purging out of there. So we should be able to open this guy up and then purge out of here, which is actually the way it'll work. This will simulate letting air out of the bag. So uh, we'll go ahead and try that. This guy. So we'll, first we'll make sure we open this valve up so that he gets some air pressure inside. So there, that's it. So now this should have a charge on it already. So when we hit this one, there should just be a small, um, it might be hard to hear, but you can see. There it goes. Yep. So, <laughs> so that worked. All right. So the last thing I want to check is to make sure that these are indeed only 6.5 watts. 
uh, which is supposed to be 540 milliamps according to the label that's stamped on the side here. So what we're gonna do is just verify that. All right, let's see what this thing draws. Let's see if we can get a reading off this. Guy. Okay, 0.57 amps. So it's supposed to be 540 milliamps and I'm seeing 560 milliamps, which is pretty close. So we'll let it go, make sure it goes back to zero. Power it up again, 0.55. So one thing to note as well is these particular solenoids, and the reason I chose them, is these are rated for 100% duty cycle. Uh, so what that means is they can remain on all the time. Um, and it's safe to leave them on, they won't overheat. A lot of coils, a lot of solenoids like this um, are designed for like 25% or 50% duty cycle, meaning you have to turn them on and off. You can't just leave them on. Uh, these specifically said they're designed for 100% duty cycle and they are IP65 um, rated, meaning they can be outside and in dust and in uh, wet conditions and they should be fine. So they should be ideal for this this type of application. Um, I'll let you know if they stop working. If they stop working, our contingency is going to be to bypass them and just then we won't have a leveling system. But hopefully they work out well. Um, Bill from one of the PD4106 groups that I met in, in Florida has a system very similar using very similar solenoids to these and he's had it on for a long time. He says it's worked great the whole time. So we're gonna go with this, see if it works. So far nothing's leaking, everything's behaving the way it should. Uh, amperages look correct. I'll test them all and make sure they're all within range and make sure none of them are leaking. And once we get them all assembled, we'll think about blocking up the bus and getting ready to, to put them in. All right, so there it is, four of these guys. I'm gonna test them all. All right, so we're continuing our work with these little manifolds that we made. Uh, we needed a way to mount them, and so we chose to use just a small piece of aluminum angle that we've then drilled the appropriate holes into the bottom to fit these blocks. And so now these, we will drill small eighth inch holes into these and then just rivet them to the rear wall um, right by the airbags where they need to be. So this is what this looks like so far. It's riveted and screwed into place. That's the airline right there that it's gonna, that's gonna feed it. And we've got a grommet and wires going through right here. Now, the other one on the other side, if we had the wires going in on that side, they would go into a battery bay, which I don't want. So what I'm gonna do is run the wires across here and kind of zip tie them up to these airlines and bring them across and bring them right in next to this guy. So I'm gonna make another hole and I'll, I'll bring the wires in there. So on this side of the thing, so if we come in here into this bay, I haven't cleaned this up yet, so it still has a little bit of drill stuff. There we can see the stuff coming in. I've labeled it. So I'll put another hole on this side of it. And then these wires will go all the way to the front battery bay. 
uh, where the controller will live. So the controller and the relay board that control these will go. All right, so here's my little test harness. I had to do this because I wanted to make sure I could get this to work the way I wanted it to. So this is just a 12 volt adapter and then that feeds a five volt adapter, which will then have VCC and ground going to it, which then comes to our processor. So this is our processor here and he's on right now. And this um, is hooked into this eight way relay board. And so now what I've gone through is I have my computer here and so if I go to ESP Home, we'll see I made this Battery Bay ESP, which is what that one is. And so what this is, is you'll see right here that we have GPIO pins as switches. So leveling RP ISO for the isolating valve, leveling RP dump, and so on leveling so rear driver iso leveling rear driver dump leveling front passenger iso leveling front passenger dump and so on for all eight valves so those will correspond to these and so when we come back so we'll close out of this and if we go into our overview we're able to come down here and see our switches. So if we click on the ISO, we'll see that that guy turned on. And so when that guy turns on, that means that's on. So if I go then and click the leveling RP dump, you'll see that the next one comes on, number two, number three, number four, etc. So they should all be able to do that. Um, and come on so they all work so I can turn them all off turn them all on um, so they all work the way I hope they would work but I had to take time out today to verify all this stuff because I wasn't a hundred percent sure that this board which is driven off of 5 volts would run off that processor which is 3.3 volts but it does indeed work just fine so um, Hopefully, if you're running a similar setup, that saves you from having to do that. But, um, but as you can see, they're all working just fine. So we can do them one at a time. And they all work the way they're supposed to. So there's that. Um, and now I'm going to drill another hole for the one on the other side. And then the last step, now that we've got everything figured out, is to snip the airline and, and uh, hook that up to our quick connects, to our, our home quick connects. So anyway, that's uh, not as far as I wanted to be, but definitely getting there. And the bus is all cribbed up on all four corners so that the bags aren't even um, they're fully deflated right now I've gone through and let all the air out um, just to make sure that the bus is solid and if we're crawling under there just to be sure that it's cribbed up and it is cribbed up properly so um, anyway so we'll continue this um, tomorrow I have a few things to do so I may have to wait till the next day but I'm definitely excited for this project and we're going to continue it probably tomorrow. All right, so we've got the airlines in now. So you can see that airline goes from the factory leveling valve, and then this one goes to the airbags. So the one on the left is what I call the isolating valve. The one on the right is the purge valve. So this should be functional now. We should be able to fill this with air and put 12 volts on that and watch this and watch this bag right here, which is soft right now, fill up. So anyway, uh, we might do that tomorrow, but we've got to get cleaned up. But that's what the final product looks like. I'll probably cable management those things up there just to get them all nice and neat. And we're pretty close on this side. All right, so driver's side this time. 
So these ones, as I explained earlier, we took the wires all the way across and they're gonna come out very close to the other one. So you can see how I tied it up on the airline there. Um, it's a little difficult to see, but hopefully that focuses. Um, so this side's done. The airbags are in where they're supposed to be. Um, here's the feed hose from the factory leveling valve here. So um, that should be ready to go. So this is the isolation solenoid and this is the purge solenoid. Wiring up the front now. So we've got the same kind of assembly. Only the difference is over here, we don't really have a wall to mount it to, but there is a, um, a hanger up at the top. There's a, there's a uh, line that I think we can just sort of hang this on. All right, good morning guys. So these are the leveling valves up front. So there's that side over there. There's our factory leveling valve there. Uh, you see how it splits off left and right. So that's the isolating valve and the dump valve for that side. Isolating valve, dump valve for that side. So we run the wires across the top, over this way, up there, and then into a grommet uh, right here. So they go in through there, and then they go into our battery compartment next door so that should be good all right so this is the electrical panel next to the driver's seat and what we needed was a power source to turn on when the ignition turns on and so this whole block is all ignition so there was a free um so these are breakers they're self-resetting breakers so there was a free breaker here so we attached our wire here and we're gonna go down and so what's gonna happen is when we turn the key on power will go on and it'll open the isolating valves so that's how that's gonna work so most of the day yesterday was spent on electrical and that is routing all the wires into this bay as well as routing all the wires from that bay into here so the fortunate thing about that is they only draw half an amp each 540 milliamps so the wire didn't have to be too big so we opted to go with 14 gauge which is probably overkill but that's fine um, that's what we typically do so we also had to route one more wire and that one wire is the ignition so the way the system works is when you turn on the ignition the key is in the on position it will open up all of the isolating solenoids so that they receive input from the factory leveling valve. And the reason that's important is because I didn't want the system to accidentally be run with those being closed as we're going down the road. Um, yes, I could have had a routine that like, oh, I, you know, I push the button and they all open up or whatever, but I just want it to be as foolproof as possible. So when you turn the ignition on, four, those four isolating valves all open and are ready for input from the factory leveling valve on all, all four of the corners. So when we're parked and we turn the ignition off, then those valves will close and then the bags are essentially sealed off from the rest of the system. So what if we need to put air back in them? Well, that's why they run through these switches. So those switches, we can then manually toggle them and the isolating valve will open, which will receive input from the leveling valve, even if the ignition is on. So anyway, we ran all those wires, ran them into here, and then got all of this stuff mounted. So just like on the desk, just like I showed you on the desk, there is this relay board, which contains the eight relays. We've got our ESP back here. That's the main processor that does everything. We've got a 12 to five volt converter providing VCC power here. And then this is just um, a 12 volts that comes from our array. So the actual leveling system uses the bus chassis power as opposed to using our, um, our 12 volt power. And it actually draws its power from down here. Um, this is 
just two posts that literally go back to the starter batteries. So that goes up here and then it goes into here. And you'll notice how some of these, the isolating valves have two inputs. Um, they have all three wires. So they have an orange wire and a yellow wire. The orange wire is from ignition 12 volts. The yellow wire, which goes to all of them is just straight 12 volts from the battery. So the way these relays work is one, the center post is the output post. One, the one on the left is normally closed, which meaning it's when it's in the off position, there's current running through that goes to these two. The one on the right is normally open. So you need to be able to power it and click it in order for that to receive power. And that's where the, the 12 volt on all the time is. While this uh, ignition is the normally closed. So what that also provides us with is if this thing breaks and it doesn't work correctly or whatever, the valves still work just as if it were on a, um, just on the switch by itself. So all this allows us to do is manually override it when we have it in the off position. So anyway, most of the time was spent wiring and running wires and things like that up underneath the bus. Um, we did test it just briefly just to make sure that when you click this, that the valves themselves clicked and it seemed like they were powered. It did seem to work, um, but since the bus is still on blocks, the airbags aren't really filling up because it thinks it's at the right height. So now we're gonna lower the bus and give it a test. All right, so I manually opened up the isolating valves. We're lowering one corner at a time and I can hear the air filling into the bags. So um, I, think, I think it's working. <laughs> All right, it's sitting on the bags. So we filled it up manually from the rear airport um, just to put air in the system. And so when we lowered things down, we could fill the bag as we were lowering it down, um, just so that we would be able to hear leaks without the big giant diesel engine running. And so we've done that and we've got, we've got it on, we've got all the jack stands out. We've got it down on its bags. And so it's, it's actually on the bags now. So we, we only pumped it up to about 85 PSI in the back, um, just, because it's lowering and hiring, lower and hiring. So we'll go ahead and try to push it all the way up and then we'll just start it up. All right, so we're back home at Michelle's parents' home. This is kind of where we stay. So um, while we're here for this short while. So we're dumping, here we have to use a macerator because they're, um, the dump is pretty far away and it's there's a slight angle away from the house. And so, you know, for drainage and stuff like that. And so it's slightly uphill. So what we do here is we run a macerator. The problem is we're, w w the way we sit, we're slightly tilted up. And so when we read like how much percent is left, there's usually about 15% left when we're done emptying our tanks with the macerator and flushing them and everything else. So what we're hoping is now that we've got the leveling valves in, we can exhaust the leveling valves on the driver's side and get it to lean to the driver's side unlevel ironically enough and then um, that will allow us to dump our tanks more completely then when we're done dumping them we can level it back out so that it's per then we can adjust it so that it's perfectly level so we've never done it before but we're gonna try it um, it seemed to work fine on the way home and at the shop and so we have it here as part of our home automation so we can see the front there um, so if we then dump so let's see so front driver's side dump is this one you can hear it and you can actually if you look you can see the bus actually tilt so <laughs> so it's working so we're gonna try that we're gonna dump it all the way down um, we're gonna watch and make sure that it only goes to the bump stops before we stop it and um, see if we can get our tank just a little bit more empty. Driver? Mm hmm. So does it look? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> it's leaning. It's leaning. We'll so now we'll dump. All right, so we just finished dumping, and for the first time ever here, our black tank says 0%. So normally it says 16 or 14, we can get it somewhere in there. Um, but with the tilting, we were able to get it all the way down to zero. So now, to get it back up to level, we have two options. So we could go in from the back, plug in a compressor, um, which we carry, and have it air up uh, through the compressor, or we could just start the engine. Um, starting the engine also turns the ignition key on, which will turn the ISO valves off. It will let air flow through the ISO valves. Um, if we were to fill it up with the compressor, we'd have to manually turn the ISOs on. So in this particular situation, because of where we are, um, the bus has to be all the way back and it's like right into like an orchard tree. So it's really hard to get the, the, um, the back thing up the uh, the hood up so we're just gonna go ahead and turn it on and see how it levels out so we're inside now the tank is still reading zero percent so that's great um, but now we're gonna level it um, and we have just this you know caveman style level um, and we see that it's a little bit up on that side. And then when we look at this one, we see that it's slightly, it can stand to go up in the front a little bit. So what we're gonna do is drop the rear uh, passenger side uh, switch. And so here we go. So rear passenger, right? So. It doesn't take much because it dumps pretty quick. Did that do it? It needs to come just a tiny bit more. More? No, oh, that's good. Keep going. How's this one do? Check. <clears throat> Ooh, wait, I can't see. That one. I need to. It's pretty close. I mean, it's in between the lines. How's that? And this one. We're getting there. Yeah, tiny bit more maybe. How's that? That's pretty close, that's good. Yeah, I think those are both good. Okay. All right, so caveman style leveling. Uh, we. <laughs> we'll caveman get... <laughs> mixed with modern technology. Right. <laughs> so now it's completely level um, and we have the gyroscope thing, but that probably won't come till a little bit later. We have a few other projects that are a little bit more pressing, but um, it's kind of exciting to be able to just completely level it and to be able to go so far to dump it and be able to get all the stuff out of our tanks. So it's, I'm gonna call this project a success. All right, day three, and we are definitely leaking down so it's not all the way down yet but it is down pretty far um, so those solenoid valves are not holding for sure so I've got a couple of options I could do one is to just pressurize the system so we could use an external compressor which we carry with us we could plumb it in and just kind of have it keep the system at you know 100 and 10 or 120 psi just like the factory or just like the the normal air compressor in the back does it just uses electrical power um, so that's option one and we could certainly do that and option two would be um, replace those solenoid valves i think the solenoid valves are fine on the exhaust but on the isolation valves i don't think they're the right thing so I looked yesterday to find maybe there's a better kind of valve that does it and I think a motorized ball valve is more of what we need. So I've ordered four of those and we're going to get those in hopefully within the next couple days. I'll swap those out and see if that works better, see if it prevents the squat. So anyway, 
that's the update on the leveling system. All right, so last we left you with the uh, height adjuster, the um, leveling valves, uh, we figured out that using the solenoid valves was not the right thing. And so what I just got today was these. So these are a motorized ball valve. So this should seal everything um, going in or out. So these should completely isolate the airbags from everything else. So I'm hoping these work. This is, so these are good for up to one bar and they actually use less power than those solenoid valves, which use about half of a, about half an amp which is pretty low, half an amp, you're talking six watts, and these use five watts, so a little bit lower. The difference is when those are on, the coil's energized, so it uses six watts no matter what. With these, um, it only really uses power when it moves the valve, so um, it's a two wire. They make these in a bunch of different configurations. There's five wire, there's three wire, there's two wire with reverse polarity. Uh, the ones I got are two wire with a default of off. And so when you put 12 volts on this, this little valve will open up. As soon as you remove the 12 volts, I don't know if it's got like a small capacitor or something, it detects that and it will um, it will close back up with the remaining power it has. We're gonna go ahead and test them because we test everything before we put it in. <laughs> so I'll test it and I'll show you guys how these things work. One thing I should mention too is these actually have an operating voltage of nine to 24 volts. And this says ACDC. Um, not sure if you can read that there. but it does say AC-DC, so I'm, I'm only using DC here. It should close in less than five seconds. It's a quarter inch stainless steel and it's IP65 weather rated, so they're good to be outside. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and try this. So sorry the 3D printer's in the way, but that's where he lives right now. We'll put the valve here and we're gonna test it. So we'll go red to positive, black to negative and see how it works. Okay, so it's on. And then I turn it off, and you can see the little valve closing. So it looks like they're working fine. I don't, I'll try to show it here so you can see the valve opening. Okay, there he's on. Okay, and this valve is supposed to be rated to, I think, 100,000 cycles. So I'm not worried about turning it on and off a few times. So anyway, we'll test the electrical draw on him to make sure he's in spec. And once we test all that and make sure that all of these are good, so I'm gonna test all four, uh, we'll go ahead and plan on installing them, hopefully within the next couple days. The way the manual says that this should work is while the motor's running, it'll draw whatever it is, um, five watts. Um, but then as soon as it's done, it should go back down and be just a real minimal draw just to keep a capacitor in there going. Um, so let's see, so we'll plug that in and we'll see, we'll see what it's doing. So there it's drawn that. And then, yeah, as it's open, it's drawing 0 0.02 amps. So that's a pretty low draw. Um, so that's pretty cool. So now it's 0 0.01. It said kind of nominal. Um, it does come with uh, schematics and sort of a little diagram of how each of the ones work. So we've got the two wire auto return, but like I said, there's a five wire with an indicator set up. There's a three wire and there's a two wire with reverse polarity. Um, it's a pretty good little data sheet here. So that's what it comes with. And it does appear to draw very little, um, very little power when it's actually 
already doing. Of course, when you remove the power, it returns, and of course it doesn't draw anything because it's using whatever internal mechanism it uses to store a little bit of energy. Um, so we'll run it again just to be sure, but it looks like it's it's doing what it said. It's not. It doesn't use a lot of power. It uses very little power. So, um, yeah. So I'm I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm gonna test the rest of them, make sure they all work. Um, that way I'll know if I have to return something. And if they're all good, we'll go out to the shop and get them installed. So the issue is, um, as the bus loses air, because it'll lose air probably in two or three days, it'll, it'll lose the air pressure that's in the system. What happens is this side here doesn't hold air anymore. So if we lower the bus, then what happens is like to level it, because we, we only lower to level, we don't go up at all. So then the factory valve thinks it needs to fill. And so it opens up the air port on this side as if it were filling. And so when that happens, it leaves a way for the air to escape. So this bag may be sitting at maybe 90 or 80 PSI. And when the pressure on this side drops below that, it allows that air to escape and we start to, we start to go down. So um, to illustrate that, we're gonna put this in here and then what you'll see is air is just going to come flying out of it, this valve. So I'm going to go ahead and hook this up and we'll be able to hear the air pouring out of it. So that is what's going on. And that is why we're leaking down. And that's the reason we're going to this style of valve. All right, so now I'll do the same test with the ball valve so it should be off now because there's no power to it and so we shouldn't this would simulate um, having a bag full of air with no pressure in the system as if it had leaked down uh, overnight or something so no leaks so yes this is indeed holding so working the way it's supposed to so these valves are wrong for the isolation valve so this should work all right so we've got the new valve installed and we've still got to wire it but it's in there and that should work a little better Alright, so this is the valves up front, so we've now, the isolation valves are these ball valves and the purge valves are still those solenoid valves, so hopefully this will do a better job of isolating that air, so anyway this is what they look like, so we're going to test them out here and see if they're working and see if we can't get the bus level and see if it holds. So that's the important part. So anyway, we're gonna try it out. So funny story, actually not funny at all. At the end of this project, we actually all got sick and so we never recorded an ending for this video. So we'll do that now. The short version is we love it. We've been using it now for four months and it's worked flawlessly. We literally use it every time we set up camp for the night. We've also found it very useful to lean the bus when we're dumping our tanks to completely empty our system. You know that feeling when you say, how did we ever get along without this? That would apply here. If the ground is extremely unlevel, in some cases we'll still use the orange blocks, then we'll go back with the air system to make sure it's completely level. But most of the time we found that the system can deal with the unlevel terrain without even needing those orange blocks. The longest we've stayed since installing the system is about 12 days and we found that the bus stays completely aired up that whole time. When we were researching leveling systems for our bus, we came across several different systems. There are some old school systems that remove the leveling valve altogether and allow you manual control of the airbags. 
We looked into a few of those. We also looked into hydraulic systems like modern RVs have uh, that use a hydraulic piston and a hydraulic pump to sort of put pads on the ground to stabilize the bus. Now, obviously those all have advantages and disadvantages, but we thought our DIY solution would accomplish exactly what we needed for a pretty competitive price. Most of those systems cost thousands to start up to about 6,000 for the hydraulic system. So I'll put a screenshot up of all the parts involved. And this includes four solenoid valves for a total of 37.32, four ball valves for 139.96, four T's at 55.60, a total of eight brass DOT approved fittings for a total of 59.60, a hundred foot roll of DOT approved nylon line, for $32.99, the relay control board for $6.99, and an ESP32 processor to control it for $10.99. This puts our total at $343.45 for our system. Although this was a tedious project, for us it was totally worth it. It takes us now just a few seconds to set up at a campsite and get our rig totally level. Please let us know if you have any questions and we'll give you one last look at how we level the bus. All right, so we just got to a campsite and we are pretty unlevel left to right. We're mostly level front to back, but we're gonna show you kind of up close how quick and easy this is to level the bus out. All right, so let me, all right. So I've got you on my little level here and you can see the bubble is way off. We are real high on the driver's side now I'm gonna turn it and you can see front to back, we're pretty level. So what we need to do is focus on the left to right. And so we are going to dump air out of both the driver's side airbags. Okay, so front and rear driver. really close, just a little bit more. A little bit more? A little bit more, okay. Okay, stop. Yep, that's level. Now left to right. And let me just check front to back again. Yep, looks good. Right. So that was it.